Hello everyone, this is a Notifier System 5000 Fire Alarm Control Panel. These were first produced in 1987 alongside the AM2020s. While the AM2020 was an addressable panel, the System 5000 was designed as a large-scale conventional panel with a capacity of up to 120 zones. With its microprocessor-based design, the System 5000 could support many of the features of its addressable counterparts, including voice evacuation, networking, and firefighters telephones, and much more. So let's jump right into this. So let's start off with a quick demonstration. One feature that's not seen often on Sister 5000 is an AIM-200 adjustable module. This allows for adjustable devices to be used on a conventional phone panel. But we'll go into more detail on this module later on. So for initiating devices, we have an MPG-10L pulse station with an MMX-101 module on it. This is not a BGX-101L. It's a conventional pole with an adjustable module on it. We also have a CPX-551 ionization smoke detector. You can see it's pulling. The notification appliance is a Wheelock EHDL1 with a WM24 strobe on it. The horn is set to temporal coding. So here we go. And we got audible silence on the strobe. Now something nice with the AIM-200 is magnet test is almost instant. And it's the same with the AIM-2020. So check this out. I didn't realize that was a bug, but the enunciator decided to go back to the normal on the second alarm. It's a bit strange. Anyway, let's activate the smoke detector with actual smoke this time. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. The main system card shows the system alarm and signal silenced LEDs, as well as the indications for the signal circuits, city time alarm relay. The LCD shows the specific point that went to alarm. And the one trouble is the signal silence. It counts as a trouble on a non-seeders. And on A200, zone one shows as alarm. It also indicates the address and the type of device that's an alarm. So address one, detector, which is that CPX551. So I'll air this out real quick, and then we can reset. Okay, hopefully that's enough. There we go. Back to normal. Alright, now let's take a look at this System 5000. To start, this is a very atypical System 5000, and for a couple of reasons. One, it's in a much smaller cabinet. Normally these are in full-size cabinets, like that one. But this one's in a smaller cabinet. We also have an LCD screen, which is not standard on a System 5000, and the aforementioned AIM-200. So let's open this up. So this cabinet is considered a mini cabinet. So the model number of this cabinet is cab-AA, and AA indicates a mini cabinet. This is the 5000, the AFP300 and 400, and the AFC600 all have mini cabinet variations as well. Let me show you. So we have an AFP400 in its mini cabinet, and then an AFC600 in a newer style mini cabinet. These are the same size as that mini 5000, just slightly different designs for the modules that are mounted inside the cabinets. So obviously this mini cabinet doesn't hold much modules in it. 
but a full-size cabinet can hold the full complement of modules that the 5000 can offer. But at least in a mini style cabinet like this, you can have some pretty neat features like this A200 and the FC80, which we'll get into in a second. So underneath all these modules is the MPS24B main power supply. And this powers everything on the system, the modules, the signals, everything like that. And none of its DC outputs are being used, and that's because there's an auxiliary power supply behind A200. There's an APS6R back there, and that's being used to power this annunciator and both of the signals. And the reason why that is is just because the output for the signals on the MPS24B is filtered but unregulated. So if you've seen UH Server Alarm's video on his system 500, you may notice that the signals sound a bit um, jittery, and that's because the output isn't actually completely uh, regulated. But the APS6R's power is regulated, so the audibles on those sound just fine. It's not really a problem, it's just, it's really just a quality thing. So let's start with the CPU module. This is the CPU 5000. This is the main module for all system 5000s. It contains all the operator controls, indicators, and it also supervises and controls any modules that are on the system like this A200. Every CPU module includes two signal circuits, a CD tie, an alarm, and trouble relay, which are all barred up top there. Now programming a system 5000 is a bit different than the addressable panels, since it's a LED-based device. So there's a little notch up there, and that's for a programming key. And the programming key looks like this. All it really is is just a connector plug with a 47k ohm resistor on it. So if you don't have a programming key, you can just wrap a 47k ohm resistor around those terminals and you can enter programming mode. Now once you're in programming mode, you have to enter a passcode. And these passcodes are the same for all System 5000s. They're, they aren't user changeable. And you just use these buttons to control them. There's also a separate slip that goes through here to indicate what programming options there are and what the buttons do. So there's an option to reconfigure the system, which pretty much checks for any modules that are connected to the system 5000 via ribbon cables, which are behind the board here. You can see some of it hanging down here. And there's also options just to enter regular system programming and extended programming. There's also a way to view event history and all that other stuff too. Although on this panel, it's not too informative. So the system 5000 is microprocessor based and can be programmed for a variety of different applications. For instance, you can set any of the zones on a, on a card to be um, water flow, supervisory, non-alarm, anything like that, like you would on a adjustable system. And you can also map inputs to certain outputs. So for instance, if you wanted to say map zone one to only activate single circuit one, you can do that relatively easy on this panel. And especially on larger systems where you may want to do selective signaling, that is very easily accomplished through programming. In the extended programming section, which is controlled with these switches here, you can set the signal coding, enunciators, alarm silence cutout, and signal silence inhibit. The System 5000 has continuous, temporal, march time, and California code for signal coding options. And the enunciator option just depends on how many enunciators are on the system and what type of points they are supposed to show. This LCD 80 is an enunciator, and we'll get more into that in just a second. And that's pretty much it, besides uh, viewing alarm history, and there's also an option to wipe the entire system database if desired. And when programming is done, you just remove the programming key, and the system goes right back into normal. Very straightforward. At the center of the panel is an LCD-80 enunciator. These are usually located remotely from the main control panel. For this system, it's being located right inside the same cabinet. On most panels, like the AM2020 or AMP400, the LCD80 is run in terminal mode, in which the LCD just mimics the main panel's LCD display. Obviously, the System 5000 does not have any LCD screen, so we have to custom program it using ACS mode. All ACS mode really is is a mode that allows a user to custom program each enunciator to display a certain label depending on what point is an alarm or trouble or any off-normal condition. So since this CPU 5000 does not have any LCD display. All of these labels have been custom programmed. Programming one of these LCD 80s is fairly straightforward. You'll need one of these programming keys, like on the CPU, or just use a 47k ohm resistor. 
And you'll also need to connect the unit to a CRT monitor or just a regular PC via RS-232. On the PC, by using a terminal emulation software like HyperTerminal, you can modify a variety of different labels on the enunciator. This includes the system normal message, like on any LCD-based notifier panel, but you can also modify the system normal, system alarm, and system trouble messages. And those have been modified on this system as well. There's also 256 regular enunciator points that can be custom programmed. And all the main panel does is indicate which point to show on the LCD-80 whenever there's an alarm or trouble condition. There's a specific programming option on the System 5000 to enunciate most of the points on the first A200 on the system. And that's what's set on this CPU. Therefore, the LCD-80 can show nearly all of the specific addresses on the A200 system. It leaves out the last like four addresses or so simply on system limitations. Regardless, having an LCD display on a panel like this is very helpful, especially when there's an A200 module on the system. The A200 is a unique module exclusive to the System 5000. It was introduced a little bit later in the panel's lifespan, around 1990 or so. It takes a single SLC loop and converts it into eight zones. The CPU only sees this as a regular zone card. But the A200 has its own microprocessor and database to pretty much provide a simplified addressable panel within the confines of a conventional system. A single A200 can hold up to 190 addressable devices, 99 detectors, and 99 modules, which include pulse stations. Up to 10 A200s can be added to a system 5000 for a grand total of 1,980 points, the same amount on an AM2020. I'm not sure if any System 5000s ever had that many A200s on there, but this is an option based on documentation. The SLC loop on the A200 functions just like any other notifier addressable panel. You have your zone indicators, and there's a little character display here to indicate the address and type of the device that is in alarm or trouble. There's some more information on this flap. Just basic information on the A200 module, as well as operating instructions. The A200 even has detector sensitivity, which is a feature that's often displayed on many of the notifier AFP panels of this time period. So this module pretty much just condenses a little AFP fire alarm panel into a single module on the System 5000. And to program one of these is very straightforward. You use the same programming key as with both the LCD80 and the CPU, and then you enter a passcode to use a certain function. So like many AFP panels, there's an auto program function that just finds all the devices on the SLC and adds them to the system. You can also check the status of each device, especially the detectors. And you can also clear the entire um, database on the A200 if you just want to start over. Just as a side note, the A200 runs System Sensors Clip Protocol and was originally designed to support the basic repertoire of notifier detectors and modules. Some newer detectors like the FSP A51 will work on the AM200, but any flash scan only detectors like the 951 series or advanced detectors like the IPX751 are not compatible. Of course, the camera size this small cannot show the full array of modules that could be used on a System 5000. A typical full-size panel may include a variety of zone, signal, and relay cards, as well as the AMG1 voice system, firefighters telephones, and timer cards for releasing and suppression or two-stage coding. The System 5000 does not run on Notifier's Notifier Net network, but it can use a NIB96 network interface board and be configured as a slave panel to a larger panel, such as an AM2020. With the AM200, the System 5000 can act as its own master panel that can control and monitor a variety of slave panels, usually System 500s. There's a lot that can be done on these panels. So this was the Notifier System 5000 Fire Alarm Control Panel. These were ultimately discontinued in the mid-2000s. Most of these have been replaced with an addressable system like the NFS2640. If you're interested in acquiring one of these panels, you're better off putting one together yourself, as these are generally uncommon. Regardless, the System 5000 is one of the most flexible and unique file systems ever produced, and for an early microprocessor-based conventional panel, it's particularly impressive. In any case, if you have any questions or comments on the System 5000, Feel free to post them below, but until next time, have a nice day.